so I just want to talk about these poles now so if you look at this pole on the inside is down low yeah that's to accommodate the horse in the middle well they're both running low you can set them to what height if you like they're both running low they've got no restriction on them lifting up when you're doing this with horses you can easily make all sore you know where he's he's touching the pole the poles are wrapped regular with sponge and then tape wrapped around them Big, you know sticky tape but not not gaffer tape uh, um, he's no good or I don't know what they call it in America is it uh, duct tape yeah that's no good no good for that job anyway good for a lot of things but it's got a weave in it you know it's got a, like a, a, a weave going for it it's no good rubble shred raw this is smooth and shiny it's what we put on the haylage bags you know if they, you can buy a roll of it in case you knock a bag and you can cover it over stop the air getting in to seal it up again so that's the stuff we use to wrap round and the poles are done I don't know every few days definitely once a week without question so also where they're where they're smooth tape that goes over they slide up and down the horse nice but the reason we've got these poles so low it's obviously too low for me big horse on the inside and too low for the outside horse but he's all right for the middle one yeah for the one in the middle and that's being he's, he's the one with less so he's going to move across from either side he's going to push and like that but if he if he lands on that pole or he gets the pole to rise up because he's laid on it it might rise up the side of his body or go down there's no restriction on it there's no retainer under the pole it can come up well come up till it's you know vertical coming straight up the dashboard so that's how we have them and we have them low like that because the other horses will cope perfectly well with the pole being too low the, the youngster in the middle he will cope um, but it will struggle um, also we have them so that their heads are in front of the pole because obviously we don't want to knock his mouth do we so you see when he's bobbing his head up and down there look he's in front of the pole so he's not going to bring his jaw down on the pole and even if he did bring his jaw down on the pole the poles are heavily sprung um, and these ones are very lightly sprung so you get poles that are heavily sprung hard to move these ones are very very simple to move come up baby come on <laughs> so i'm really really pleased with these going out together so we've achieved a lot today we've got this horse in the middle he's learnt to tolerate horses up either side of him the one on the outside is seeing some traffic obviously and he's he's on that outside there so he's nearer than the traffic than he'll ever be when he's in single or a pair so we're doing that so we're doing the claustrophobic thing we're getting the, the other one also to get the the near side horse to climb up on the on the uh, verge you know on the sidewalk even what you call it or the pavement we call it um, to climb up on there so he can be in the in the gap but this is a lovely thing you see we just picked up a piece of wood you see what I mean look a branch been knocked off but they take no notice no notice at all it's making a noise rubbing on the wheel you probably won't hear it so much on the film here but uh, yeah so you've got to use I suppose really what I'm saying is You've got to use every opportunity, every opportunity you've got to teach your horse. So say for instance there's a slow sign, yeah? What I will do when I've got a single or a pair or even a tandem, I'll put the horse, you know, I'll pick the horse I want and I'll put him over a certain letter, yeah? As long as it's safe to do so on a public highway. Um, 
as long as it's safe to do so. So there's an ambulance just gone up there that's good. Come on. Hmm. There a trailer with an old thing on the back, see the horse taking no notice, everything good. Traffic's, um, we always treat the traffic with the, you know, the utmost respect. So we don't hold them up. Um, you know, we don't have a great big queue of traffic behind us. You know, two or three cars maybe. Look up, mate. So as you see behind us now, we've got nothing at all. And the reason we don't have anything, and like, you know, sometimes... We've got to share this road, this public highway with everybody. We've got to be respectful to them. There's people have got to get on, they're going to work, and things have moved on a long time since horses was on the road. You know, and they expect to get everywhere a lot quicker than they did back in the day. So, all right. <laughs> so, come up, both Steady, Steady, my babies. You're my baby, boys. You're steady now. That's good, babies. Come up. So, I've got a chance now with old Dursley to put him over in a bit of green stuff. Can you see? Look, on his ears and... Yeah. And like that. That's good. Very, very good. So, we, so when you're driving your horse, even if you're driving in and anywhere, up a track, you know, uh, trails or anything like that, you should say, oh, there's, uh, you know, there's, no, you're not, you shouldn't, you do what you want to do. But what I do is I look, so we've got a line up here in front of us on this tarmac here. Yeah? So what I'm going to try and do is bring this horse over and put two horses over that side of the line, you know. Here, look, can you see? So there he goes. You can see down by his feet now. He's on that side, right on that line there, right? Now, you wouldn't think two horses fit in there, would you? It's only about three foot wide, but they're in there. Um, so I'll do that. Now, you say, well, where's the point of that? Well, the point of that is you're teaching the horse and yourself to be able to steer and control him and get him where you want him to be, you know, without hurting him. That's why people, you know, we only have soft rubber bits. And whichever way you work it out, whichever way you want to do it, and I'd argue the point with anybody any day of the week, that they say it's pressure, pressure and release. In my opinion, it's pain and release. You know, if you, if you don't believe me, just put one ear, put the bit there on your wrist, and the curb chain underneath, keep your thumb up like that and twist a bit on the shank. And you'll find, you know, make a man cry, the pain. So that's why I believe if I can control and drive all these different horses just in a soft rubber bit, don't make me anybody, you know, wonderfully special. And I can, you know, gallop these full gallop um, and skid them to a stop. No trouble at all, which you see on this truck come past. Yeah. Which you see on uh, loads of films, you know, hundreds of films, there's thousand films on YouTube, I think now, something like that. We've just gone past 20 million hits on YouTube. I don't really understand that, but apparently that's you know quite a lot for the you know, little niche bit we are in the horse world, you know, driving horses. So everyone's going along happy, and everybody's learnt a bit. Except me old mate on the inside, he's probably not learned much. <laughs> old Cloud, but they're lovely little sugar plums, all of them, aren't they, really? They're all lovely in their own way. And if we're going to take them out of the wild, I don't mean a paddock or a field. I mean, take them from the wild, where they can run and go anywhere and live their lives. And the only thing that stops them is a swamp, a mountain, a forest, a cliff. 
you know, some natural thing that stops them, a great river they can't cross. But other than that, they're free to go anywhere. If we're going to take them out of that environment and ask them to live in ours and work with us, we should treat them with the utmost respect, right? And also see horses for what they are, not what we think they are or want them to be. And do what I've always said, said it millions of times now, I suppose, really. They want to be safe, confident, and the most important is happy. Why shouldn't they be happy doing what we asked them to do? Why shouldn't they be happy? So if I can do this in a soft rubber bit that would never, can't hurt them in a soft rubber bit. If you put a soft rubber bit in your hand and the two rings either side where you fix the bridle and the reins to, put some weights on either side and you'll lift it up, you know, a considerable amount of weight. Put a metal bit in, straight bar, metal bit, and do the same, you won't lift it because it'll hurt your bloody hand. It'll hurt. It'll hurt. So what right have we got to hurt them? No. Let them be happy like that. Let them go along like that. Right? With nothing on at all. And just walk along, comfortable, happy, doing what they're doing. He's taking in the scenery here. Cloud's telling this pony, come up and pull the weight of this with me. That's what he's saying. <laughs> Hey, I'm talking to you, he's saying. <laughs> so that's what you want to do. And the other thing you want to be able to do is this. And they'll do it if they trust you and you've broken correctly, right? And they've got confidence. Hey! Shh! Who am I? Get away! Whoa! Just walk, my babies. And there they are back again, exactly the same thing.